What's up guys, Vern here, Poggy Boy Productions. So I've been invited to a restaurant called Heirloom Kitchen. Uh, it's gonna have like five different chefs, five Filipino different, five Filipino chefs, and they're all gonna prepare a five course meal. It's not cheap, but it's really uh, a cool way to honor all the Filipinos. It's actually October, Filipino American History Month, and I'm wearing a cool t-shirt, check it out. It says Filipino on it. <laughs> with all the types of food anyway yeah so this is the heirloom kitchen i heard it's in a really nice restaurant fancy place i have a friend that works there and we're all gonna sit down and enjoy the meal i don't know what to expect but it's probably gonna be delicious for sure so anyway guys if you're interested to see what the meal was about and uh, all the chefs that are there a lot of popular ones too from new jersey keep watching celebrate you know Filipino culture because you know it it gets overlooked a lot and it's just a way to kind of bring everybody together and you know just kind of like celebrate the whole thing so thank you everybody for joining us this fancy this is uh sparkling water Cool. And what is this? This is the GTR? This is the GTR Field Light. Okay. They're from Alba. It's over in Milford, New Jersey. So like North West Jersey. A whole cool family run operation over there. Oh, nice. Look at that. Both generations of Tom. Right? <laughs> Thank you. This is papaya. Sweet and flaky with a twist of bagel on. With this um, dish, it's Eric. Tell me if I'm pronouncing it correctly. Pia. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. So it's pia. Um, as a little kid, I always loved eating sweets before eating main course or even like whatever my mom would cook for me. So essentially, this dish is like a Filipino unleavened flatbread that is uh, stuffed and filled with like a muscovado sugar jam, essentially. And then uh, accompanying it is a uh, fermented shrimp jelly, essentially. So it's like a really nice take on sweet, savory, and really nice buttery, flaky, essentially good piece of vehicle to uh, sl smother all that into. So enjoy. Thank you very much, guys. So this is uh, Kia? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And this is their appetizer. The intro to the, all the eating today. We'll be doing it five courses. It's supposed to be flaky. Mm. That's good. It's not too sweet. Taste is just right. So now we're gonna add some bagong paste. This is like their jam. For those who don't know, bagong is shrimp paste. Usually you dunk your mangoes on here. Let's try it. 
Gives it that sweet, sort of sour taste. I like it though. It's different. But um, the overall sweetness is overwhelming to this. But it gives you that extra flavor, that extra taste to it. It's different. Definitely different, but it's good. I think Chloe in the Poset, I think. These are big plates, but look how look, look at the portion. <laughs> this is what you get for like a five course tasting menu. Right, this is pretty good. We'll see. For your next dish, you have something uh, we call uh, Kilowin Naposit. Um, basically, it's our version of uh, ceviche. So we did our, um, I did mine with squid. So basically, what you have in front of you is squid that's been marinated in some tam uh, tomato water, um, some calamansi, and some lemongrass and coconut milk. Then you have a lemongrass and coconut curd, um, just to give a little bit, introduce a little bit of fattiness into the dish. Uh, there is also a cucumber relish that's been finished off with some Thai chili, a little bit of Fresno chili, and uh, some fish sauce. And finally, some annatto oil and uh, fried duck skin because we're at heirloom. When you're at heirloom, you have to have duck in some form. Please enjoy, guys. Thank you. All right, this is pusit. And you probably heard all the ingredients. I'm not going to explain it, but it's very fancy. This is her, his version of the ceviche. Mm. Like the the soft. This is very flavorful. You feel the crunch. And then the, the squid itself, it's nice and soft. It goes down smooth. It has a citrusy taste. But this is delicious. A plus from Eric, man. This is good stuff. <laughs> you like ceviche? You love squid? That's it. Perfect. So this is the version of the chicharron. This is the duck. Oh, yeah. Here you hear that crunch. <laughs> really good. Oh, this is the puto pao. Has Filipino rice cake, mushroom adobo jam, gold and truffle. That looks cool. It's so good. Oh, yeah. Good evening, everybody. Uh, applaud yourselves, for please, for making it out tonight. Thank you. I applaud all of you as well. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Jason Marisigan. On social media, uh, I am the social media chef of the group. I don't have a restaurant. I cook on the internet. I make cooking videos on the internet. So if you can follow me on, you know, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, TikTok, Chef Blackbeard is the name. And I always start my videos I'm, with the way I'm going to start off tonight. I do a hand sign. It is a uh, sign language for it's what's up, catch up. So I say what's up, catch up to everybody tonight. Um, and tonight I am presenting to you uh, Puto Pau. Um, my family, uh, I like history. We, uh, when my parents immigrated to America, you know, my mom was a nurse. My dad uh, worked, I think, in an auto um, garage. And we started doing a family business with a grocery store where we sold uh, kakanin, which is uh, Filipino rice cakes. And on Fridays when I was growing up, I was a little boy, I'd always remember my mom after her shift at work, you know, working a hard shift as a nurse, if there are any nurses out here, you guys know how hard that is, she'll actually um, take a quick nap and then she'll make kakanin, she'll make the puto, this is the exact recipe in front of you that my mom has made, she'll also make, she also made a kuchinta, which is something different. Um, and this is like a, I'm doing this as a, uh, like a tribute to my mother because this, she helped make the Filipino American dream happened for me. Um, so this is called puto pao. It is puto is Filipino rice cake. It is topped with a mushroom uh, adobo jam. Uh, it is made with a uh, shiitakes, um, white fungus, 
uh, oyster and uh, porcini mushrooms. Um, I use three kinds of acids to give it that Filipino kick. I used uh, umeboshi, which is a salted uh, pickled plum. I also used uh, a little bit of dato puti to give that familiar flavor to Filipino households. <laughs> and also, uh, if you don't know, Chef Romi is in the house, and we I ate his restaurant way back when, and uh, at Sandralon, and uh, he uh, used a different vinegar for his adobo, and he got a lot of flack for it. And me being on the internet as well, trying to do different things with different ingredients, but still keeping it Filipino also got a lot of that's why I knew he was coming. I had to change it up a little bit. So I also added a berry vinegar to it, so you're gonna get a nice fruitiness. Uh, it was also made with black garlic and regular garlic. You're gonna get that kick of garlic in there. Um, take it in one bite, two bite, two bites, no more than two bites, you know, it's a, it's a finger food kind of thing. Imagine you're at your party kicking it up with your guests, you know. Please enjoy. Thank you so much. All right. Let's try the Filipino rice cake. I don't even have to start this, but I'm just going to get down and dirty. And the waiter loved this one, so I, mean, I expect good things. Right? True that. It's Friday too, so... Okay. Aspirin drama meeting in the morning will be good for the day. <laughs> yep, the rice cake is very uh, soft. And I do, I do taste the hint of vinegar. That, that, that to put it. <laughs> but this is uh, definitely uh, finger food for sure. I think there's. Yep. It's a combination of the sweet, sour. It works. It's good though. This is the Sinigang Ramen, has pork belly, cabbage, charred cherry tomato, oh I see it, uh, tamarind broth, and the ramen, drama oil, oh yeah, oh yeah. My name is Casey, I run a ramen shop up in Nali, New Jersey. Um, this is my take on the Sinigang, uh, obviously it's not Sinigang, this is just my, my uh, kind of noodle way of doing it. I made all the noodles, I made all the broth. Uh, the broth took about three days to cook. Uh, the pork is confit, and then all the other vegetables I sourced from like a couple of farmers that I, I work with. Um, but I didn't grow up here, I, I moved here in 97, but I've always wanted to do my own ramen shop, so eventually I will open one. But for the time being, I'm, uh, I am a ghost kitchen up in Italy. But please enjoy, this is my ramen for you guys. Unfortunately, the video didn't record. Don't ask me what happened, but I don't have it. Anyway, this is the Sinigang Ramen. The broth itself was just perfect amount of sour. The noodles was savory. Um, the veggies was all there, tomato. The pork was very tender. And it's just a fusion of a popular dish, ramen and Sinigang. And I think it works. It's definitely worth a try here. Check them out at Chef KC, I think he makes this in the shop. This is their binalot. You open it with your hands, combined style. It has braised beef, salted egg, patsio, banana blossom, shishito pepper, jasmine rice, and soy pineapple. Let me see if I can turn it around and just show you what's in here. Oh, it's fully wrapped. I'll unwrap it later. But you can see it peeking out right there. <laughs> guys my name is Chef Ruby I'm from the land of smiles <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm from Tarlac in the Philippines I wrote down what I have to say because sometimes I go off tangent what you have today is a uh, it's called binalot it's a farmer's um, it's a farmer's lunch uh, dish that in the rural in the rural places of the Philippines they use uh, banana banana leaves because we don't have 
that resources of like plastic lunchbox. So we use my grandmother or my, my dad would go to the farm and my grandma will wrap all of the, the his lunch um, for the afternoon. Banana trees are abundant in the Philippines, that's hence why we, we use that. Um, Binalot is usually filled with rice, meat, and uh, roasted vegetables, and, um, and eggs. It's a well-rounded uh, well rounded meal for uh, hard-working farmers. Today, um, I prepared a dish that's really close to my heart. Um, the dish that is in, in the banana as I, you guys unwrap it, you guys can start eating uh, if you guys want, um, is humba. Humba is a Visayan dish, which is um, their version of this uh, uh, adobo. Um, so in their, in their region, they use pineapple, pineapple juice instead of vinegar. It's sweet, um, and sometimes it has fermented black beans. But with this dish, I kind of like extracted what what's inside. I dissected the dish. Um, my grandmother. This is one of my grandmother's um, dishes that she um, makes for people that are coming home or she's welcoming to her house. Um, it has banana banana heart, faxiu um, banana heart, which is uh, vinegar based, and then the humba is made with. Soy, pineapple juice, star anise, and um, uh, muscovado sugar, and shishito peppers, and then salted eggs. And then in the middle is uh, the quintessential rice that we love to eat with. This is what I'm serving you guys is something that I want to express my love to my grandma in every opportunity that was given to me. I want to highlight my grandma in every dish that I make. So this is her heart on a plate. So thank you guys. Alright. Let's cry. This is like Mayan style with the banana leaves. Usually this would be prepared in a long table and then you eat it with your hands. But today I'm using spoon and fork. So add some garlic fried rice into it. Some of the beef. Actually, it's kind of dark in here. You can't tell what I'm having in here. I'm just going to mix a whole bunch of ingredients in here and just put it in my, my mouth. Cheers! Mm. This is something that it will definitely remind you of your mom's home cooking. If you're in the Philippines, you grew up in a Filipino family, eating the rice, you got the ulam, you got the egg, salted egg. Mm. Definitely a homely meal. This is good. This is something like, uh, yeah. It's a twist, it's like nala, but it's really good. Um, yeah, definitely try it. You can taste the vinegar and stuff too. Like, you know, the Filipino taste. This is all packaged into this meal. Good stuff. I got the happy ending. And I heard this has um, really strong three shots of espresso, I think. And something else, something else. That's a cappuccino. Desserts coming up. This is the maize cone halo. It looks like halo halo. Shaved ice, sweet corn, condensed milk, and caramelized corn flakes. And I think that's ube ice cream. That's ube ice cream, right? Yeah. Alright. for me was really fun um, so some of my first food memories are actually eating Filipino food I was born in Guam and my mom was a single uh, mother in the Navy 
And so uh, my caretaker was actually a Filipino woman. And this is a woman that I knew before I even knew my grandmother. And so I wanted to make a dessert that I felt like she probably would have fed me at some point. And so when I spoke to a friend and said, you know, I really want to do something really respectful of uh, Filipino culture that I feel like people would be excited to have, um, we spoke about this dessert. And so, you know, I hope you all enjoy it and I hope it brings you a little bit of joy. So. All right, time for some shaved ice. This is the maize cone yellow, which is similar to a hollow hollow. Supposed to mix it, but uh, I'm gonna go straight into it. Get some ube ice cream. Love my, love me my ube. Try to get some shaved ice in here. And some chips. Mm. This is good after a heavy meal. That and coffee. Sweetness of the shaved ice, the ube ice cream. Perfect way to end a five course meal. Good stuff. Well, hope you guys enjoyed that video. That is the Erinlung Kitchen in Old Bridge, New Jersey. Like all the chefs prepared some wonderful food. I think I particularly like the squid and I also like the ramen, the Sinigang ramen. Actually, they were all good. And then the binalot. That was like a whole Filipino meal in itself. And then, you know, you, ice it, you eat that dessert, that icy, sort of like a halo halo. It's my, my ice cone, mel yellow or something. I forget, I forget the name. But yeah, got a quick change again. Still in the same shirt. But uh, yeah, so if you guys are around the Old Bridge area, check them out, Heirloom Kitchen. Uh, I have a friend that cooks there. They also have cooking classes and I think you just go into their website and they have all kinds of different events. So yeah, definitely check them out. Uh, I'm not sure when their next event is, but if you, they do have one, I'm pretty sure the website will have it. So uh, yeah, I'll leave all the information down below. Check them out. Thanks to all the chefs that uh, provide all the good meals. Anyway, anyway guys, if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you hit that red button down below. Ring the bell so you get notified of all our future videos. Like, comment, and share because sharing is caring. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.